integration reform on the table? that like immigration and racial justice mm -hmm. is in it together mm -hmm. the way they treat people different. Uh, my name is Max Kim. Uh, this is going to be the first time that I share my story. The reason why I feel compelled to speak out for the undocumented members in the community is because I personally know what it feels like to live in fear of deportation and a lack of a stable future. I learned that even one speech can make a difference. When I think of all the parents, brothers, sisters, aspiring doctors, teachers, artists, and more who come to this country to pursue their dreams or in search of a better life, I also think about this inhumane immigration system that separates families and closes the door on millions of people. Um, we're the next to like leave this world and so by this trip happening I just felt like this is one step up, one step closer to us being able to leave this world. Fist up! Fist up, fist up! Gonna rock this Dream Riders tour, yeah! yeah. Like, I guess the primary reason why I'm doing it is because I wanted to meet um, dreamers that aren't just Hispanic because growing up that's all you know is like dreamers in your community. So I thought it would be like a really cool experience to share like different cultures. Rather like our cultures are really um, unique but at the same time they're very really similar. Um, so I'm here because you know um, I wanted our voice to be united, you know, um, I didn't know that there were so many organizations out there that support immigration, and other than that, people who are not even directly uh, affected by immigration are there to support as well, so I feel like uh, everybody who's working toward any like social justice kind of work should unite together, whether it be racial injustice, immigration, or any other things. If you guys want to discuss any techniques that you guys have to get registrations, then that's great. But let's go through the form. So in the first box where it says, check the language in which you blah, 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 that's uh, what materials they're going to get when they get their voter registration card. So if you register them in English, but they want Spanish materials, then you would check in oh, Spanish. Change the world. So. That's very sketchy. <laughs> Any benefits off of this? Yeah, a good president. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Okay. <laughs> so how's your day going? It's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was like, 
Dream Riders Across America, it actually started in 2013. Um, and it, the purpose of the trip was to really uplift the voices of Asian American undocumented young people and Asian American immigrants who have been impacted by the immigration system. And um, that's been kind of big on the table, like immigrant rights, DACA, DAPA is one of them. And also what's been happening a lot and has been on the news also is police brutality. And so we really believe that building youth power is one of the key components. official start of our Dream Rider tour. We want to be listened, that's like our main goal. That's why I'm here, because um, we all have a story. We, especially uh, as undocumented uh, students who are DACA recipients, and even those who aren't, like the US citizens that are coming along with us, they can always relate to somebody else's story, because in the, end, the long run, racial injustices and immigrant um, injustices, they. They all combine, they all come to the same thing. Simply, simply because you're not legal in this country does not mean that you don't have a voice, that you don't matter. We, should, we shouldn't live in fear of being unfairly treated simply because of our immigration status. Hey. <laughs> My name is Jenny Hong and I am undocumented with DACA. I now live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with my family. My family and I came to the United States when I was barely six months. However, due to complications, unlike my parents, I was unable to obtain a visa to come to the United States directly. Um, after coming to the U.S., my sister was shortly born afterwards. And throughout our lives, both my mother and my father were low-wage low jobs in order to support our family. My mother works in a nail salon and my father works at the flea market through harsh condition. In 2012, I was eligible for DACA and my parents are also eligible for DAPA currently. But due to opposition from the courts, DAPA is now put on a hold. Arriving to America, a place of opportunity and where dreams can come true, my parents left Korea to escape poverty and broken dreams only to face a harsh reality. Before the tour started, I told my cousin about this, and then she was just telling me, like, oh, be careful out there. You know, think about it. You don't need to be in the front of the battle. You don't need to uh, pop your face out. Just you know, just stay in the movement, but don't don't call too much attention. And then when today when I was in the studio, I was just cracking up. I'm like, wow, way to take advice. Now I'm going on the news. Like, you know, when I go home, not people don't ask me to speak that much. People don't ask you to go on TV randomly. People people don't ask you to write an article. So when you have a chance, you just. Today, my brothers and sisters, my fellow dreamers, would like to speak about justice. My brother and sister go out in danger. Danger of being shot by a police officer, security guard, or a simple park ranger. All for no reason other than hate. They are making families heartache. Is this truly fair? Do we really care? Our brother is gasping for air. I can agree. Our country was founded in diversity. However, we still face many adversities. Citizens with poor memories forget history and fight for territories. A flag that carries a symbol for hate for a new century sparks a debate. Take, Take it, it down. down. I'll try not to give a wrong turn. 
so that to my home I will return. Before we say our last goodbyes, let us truly know if it was suicide. Say her name. Sandra Land. Our communities are fighting together. We're trying to make the world better. Justicia. Chongi. Justice. Okay, so I'm April Bravo. I'm 16 years old and I'm a Laotian American from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm part of the Southeast Asian Coalition. Um, and growing up as a Laotian American here in Charlotte, I've had many opportunities, been blessed with many opportunities that have allowed me to interact with a diverse group of people throughout my entire life. So I now feel obligated to stand with other communities and of color and solidarity. Deportations affect um, communities across America. Um, I know because it affects me, and I was born in America as well as my children. Um, most people, when we speak to them regarding deportations, their response is, you know, people shouldn't have come here illegally. But it's important to remember that not everyone who is affected by deportations came here illegally. It's also important to remember that whatever the government does to any immigrant and any immigrant community is a testing ground for what they can do and are willing to do to their own citizenry. I actually grew up in Georgia, so I find it fitting to have Georgia be the first place I share my story. The reason why I feel so compelled, I personally know what it feels like to live in fear of deportation and a lack of a stable future. The thing that hurts the most is that I grew up in America, just like every other American, and only now am I figuring out that because of something I had no control over, I'd be alienated from the same faces I grew up with as they move forward. I'm asking community members to give all immigrants the opportunity to have a fair and equal shot at the American dream. So Max's story was kind of uh, emotional, emotion, emotional to me because um, I've known him for seven years and uh, I didn't know how hard it was for him because I didn't really know he was undocumented until about a year or a year and a half ago. And when I finally heard the story, I just uh, kind of broke down because uh, I don't, I didn't know what it was like. And uh, when I finally heard it, it just kind of hit me. I find it very powerful that we're spreading the word about it and that so people can know that DACA and DAPA is there and we have to make sure people can live freely and just because someone's skin is different doesn't mean you can pick on them and it's not right if you do. Actually, like walking across and then thinking about like all the struggles and like all the harassment and all the violence that happened when I moved towards people of color like me is just like, and it's just like it just hits me really hard. Cause, like I never thought like I'll see myself like out here in Selma, in Birmingham, looking at the church where all the the four little girls died, and then walking across where the thousands of people came like together to make history. Like, I'm grateful for the civil rights movement.
nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and respect each other. We must love each other and respect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and respect each other. We must love each other and respect each other. And seeing unjust things happening right right in front of me so now more than ever I realize the depth of the stories that lie behind the lack of an immigration reform and now more than ever I realize the roots of, uh, of why we don't have a reform uh, in this field, in this country, and that is because of racial injustice and, and just, just history repeating itself. Um, initially, I thought it would just be like press conference after press conference after press conference, but it's kind of just more than that. It's like meeting people and like hearing what they have to say towards the issue and kind of seeing like other people's like observations of what's really happening. Uh, a lot of the times what we do, we, we go in and we tell their, uh, our stories and we put a face to the struggle so that they see what it's like. So it's not just numbers, statistics, it's not just, oh, so this happened to one person. No, they see you, they see the struggle and they see that it's real, that it's happening. It's my duty to give that opportunity to someone else later on. If they gave it to me, my parents gave that to me, then I have that responsi responsibility to pass it on. The reason why I'm here today is because someone organized that. The reason why this law comes out is just because someone organized that. So organizing is, is, is bringing people together from my understanding. And I think that is, that is one of the most important things because if there's no community, there's no group of people, then there's no force of any change or anything in, at all. Good morning, I have a fist. Fist up. Fist up, fist up. 